Um, growing up with divorced parents, my mom was an alcoholic and my da dad was a meth addict. Um, I was determined to create a safe and secure life for myself. And so at 17, I met somebody who I could create that safe life with. And soon we got married and had two beautiful daughters. Uh, being a mom really was, I felt was my life purpose. I loved being a mom. Um, my girls were in dance and cheer. I was homeroom ambassador, planning all the classroom parties. And my hobby was to scrapbook, to make pages full of memories of all of our family photos. And uh, it was National Scrapbooking Day, 2007. Uh, a marathon at the local scrapbooking store. So you stay up all night and just scrapbook all night. And uh, I remembered in, when I was in seventh grade, I tried something called Crystal. And I knew it would work way better than coffee and it would help me to stay up all night. And so not knowing anyone who did drugs besides my family, I called my little brother and I asked if he knew where I could buy some. And he hangs up on me. My dad quickly calls me back asking me how much did I want. And that's where my life ends and my story begins. Uh, it worked really well, you should see my scrapbook. <laughs> but uh, after the, the effects wore off, I felt sick and tired and exhausted. And being a wife, a mother, and a manager, I didn't have time for that. Uh, so I quickly got more and more and more. And just like that, I'm addicted. Um, it took a while for anyone to notice. And at first, people said I lost weight. So of course, that made me feel good. Um, but my addiction got worse and worse. Uh, my children and my husband became less and less of a priority to me. And soon I decided I wanted a divorce. My life just spiraled out of control. I lost my home in the spring. I lost my job in the summer. I lost my car in the fall and I landed myself in jail on Christmas for shoplifting Christmas gifts for my daughters. And this was a pattern for me for the next four years uh, in and out of jail until I landed myself on probation. And my probation officer sent me to rehab. I spent 92 days in an inpatient facility and one day at a time I rebuilt my life and my relationship with my daughters, rebuilding the trust showing them and myself that I could be that wonderful mother that I once was. My life was really picking up. I completed two years on probation. I had a new job. I had a new car. Uh, I was trying to rent a house. And the realtor gave me a call. My ringtone was Good Life from One Republic. And he says to me, you mentioned that you were on probation. You didn't say anything about being in the middle of an identity theft case. And this was news to me. And so I went online and I looked. Yes, I have a warrant for my arrest. The state had brought up two-year-old charges on me. And I immediately feel like I need to kill myself because how can I let my daughters down again? How can I break their hearts again? So having no family to lean on, I call my best friend from fifth grade, Amanda, and I share this news with her and she's grocery shopping with her kids. She quickly leaves the grocery store, drops the groceries and her kids off with her mother and comes to help me through the worst day of my life. And she quickly helps me see that yes, this is horrible, um, but I can get through this and death is forever. And so my first court appearance, I learned that I will spend or can spend up to 10 years inside prison um, I break the devastating news to my daughters. Uh, we just adopted some kittens. We have a new dog. Now we have to find homes for our new family members. And I remain sober through all of this, knowing that I would never go back to that horrible person I had become on drugs. Living every day like it was my last, eating my favorite foods, celebrating Christmas early, knowing that this is all gonna come to an end. Sentencing day comes. I'm sentenced to two and a half years to Perryville Prison. I'm immediately handcuffed, no hugs goodbye, and I will not hear my daughter's voices for the next two and a half years. Soon in, in prison, I hear of an opportunity to work for a company called Televerdi, and I know I have to work there. 
And so I, I get the job and here I am sitting in prison, being stripped of my identity, and now with an opportunity as an inside sales rep, a skill set I never thought I would earn. And so it turns out I was pretty good at generating quality leads. And so I was offered a position at our corporate office when I had graduated or was released. Um, today, I own a new car, a new house. My oldest daughter is studying psychology at the Grand Canyon University. And every year, Every year for the past four years, I've closed $1.2 million for my client, Pulse Secure. You see, I never thought I'd end up like somebody on intervention. And just like that, I was. But that's not who I am today. My past does not define me. I'm a better mother and a stronger woman than I was before this all started. And if telling my story helps change the way one person thinks, then it's worth telling. And my challenge to you is to not judge somebody by a bad decision they made on the darkest day of their life. Give somebody a second chance with this felony conviction because we will work harder and be more dedicated than your average employee. Because we have something to prove to ourselves and our families that we can and we will rise above our past. Thank you.